Every time someone new comes along to challenge the status quo, you squint a little and start paying attention to the bold claims. Because hey, the new guy has to be loud, right? And that's exactly what Volkswagen has done with the Arteon, its flagship model. Today, I'll give you an unbiased review of the Arteon R-Line. I'll tell you the good and the bad, as well as how it stacks up in a segment that is full of bad knobs. You know it's true, so let's get the intro rolling and start the show. This review is brought to you by Petronas Primax 97 with ProRace. Power to move beyond. Arteon presented before you is the facelifted model and the sole R-Line variant that is available in Malaysia. It's locally assembled in Pekan and carries a price tag of 258,000 ringgit. That is a 36,000 ringgit price jump compared to the pre-facelift Arteon R-Line, which is quite substantial if I have to say so myself. If you're looking for a sedan around this price range, you'll definitely be considering the G20 BMW 320i Sport, which costs about 14k less all in. The new W206 Mercedes-Benz C-Class on the other hand is quite a bit more steep at 288,000 ringgit, so maybe that is out of the picture, or at least until the CKD model arrives. For that money, you're actually getting a lot more features and performance should you choose the Arteon. For someone who is actually intentional about a car purchase, this is the part where you really start weighing out the pros and cons. Do you care at all about performance or would you rather be seen driving a BMW or a Mercedes-Benz? And if you're actually considering the Arteon, how does it stack up against the more aspirational German compact executive sedans? Well, let's start with the design. It's huge at close to 4.9 meters long, which makes it about 100 millimeters shorter than the 5 series, but hides its size really well in this four-door coupe format. The face gets a slight redesign where the LED DRLs extend all the way inwards to the badge, and the clamshell bonnet features really prominent lines to give it a sense of motion, even at standstill. The bonnet shot line actually meets with the shoulder line, which is the kind of attention to detail normally seen on Audi cars. The front and rear overhangs are short, putting strong emphasis on the 2.8 meter long wheelbase, and it sits on 19 inch dual tone Montevideo alloy wheels wrapped with Pirelli P0 UHP tires. But like everyone's favorite meme, the part that turns the most heads is this rear three quarter angle. It is incredibly fetching, but with the full width LED third brake lights, this black spoiler, and then you have this brand new IQ lights full. LED taillights with sequential turn indicators. This one looks the business. It's so gorgeous. And also you have a rather elaborately designed rear diffuser where it's actually perforated underneath to reduce turbulence. There are chrome finishes on the lower side of the doors as well as around the rear bumper and the same bright work is also used to pull your attention to the quad exhaust tips or the housing that is fake because the exhaust actually point downwards. Other details include chrome window surrounds, super sexy frameless doors, new VW badging, powered tailgate with a kick sensor, a 360 degree surround view camera, LED puddle lights, and keyless entry on all four doors. Nice. The Arteon is also the first Volkswagen model in Malaysia to carry the new R logo, by the way. Inside, the changes are slightly less noticeable at first glance, but if you take a closer look at the dashboard, it no longer looks like the Passat. That's because the designers made it a point to distinguish the Arteon away from the Passat, so the clock has been removed and replaced instead with nicer Evans design and silver trimmings. Now, when you're driving at noon, this piece right here is gonna reflect sunlight and it can be pretty glaring, no pun intended, but I like how the designers have designed this cockpit so it gives you that feeling of being encapsulated in like a luxury or premium german car uh, much like an audi for example so this strip goes all the way around to the doors and it visually connects yeah the top and the bottom piece so that's nice the steering wheel is also brand new so it features this touch sensitive uh, controls with haptic feedback 
Now, it's a lot like the new E-Class with the touch-based controls and all that thing, but anything touch-based to me invites uh, navigational errors and some weird unwanted inputs when you're driving. So I much prefer traditional uh, switches and buttons on the steering wheel, but this is a nice addition because you're going for the whole premium look and I think it does it really well. The center display is still the same 9.2 inch Discover Pro head unit and if you've been following my reviews, you'll know that I prefer my displays to be at eye level because anything below is, to me, unsafe for use when you're on the move especially. And for a car without AED, having it right here is going to invite some, uh, let's call it, accidents. In this regard, I would say that the upper hand goes to the 3 Series because it's positioned right here, the display. But, you know, at least you don't have to pay 1300 ringgit to get wireless Apple CarPlay because it's standard here, which is the way it should be. And once you're paired, it takes less time for CarPlay to fire up and play your songs on Spotify or Apple Music than it takes you to get ready to drive off. And it works 100% of the time, all the time. Traditionally, Volkswagen competes against the likes of the Camry and Accord. You know, more mainstream cars in that D segment category. In that sense, Discover Pro blows them way out of the water. There's absolutely no contest. But if you're competing in the premium segment, it becomes a different ball game because the BMW Operating System 7 is right here. Cream of the crop, best in the business, and few can really come close. This is still a good head unit, don't get me wrong, but I did say I was going to be unbiased, and so I will happily say very objectively that this is still no match for what you get with the Mercedes-Benz C-Class and the G20 BMW 3 Series. Plus, there's no wireless charging here to complement the wireless Apple CarPlay and the USB-C charging port in the console here, which is available in the Passat, is no longer here. Instead, you've got two charging ports, both of which are USB-C in the center armrest. So yeah. What it does better is audio reproduction. Here you get a 700 watt 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with an integrated subwoofer and this one sounds a hell of a lot better than what you get with the 3 Series and C-Class. The climate control panel also gets completely redesigned, now featuring the same touch-based controls with haptic feedback as the steering wheel. Now this one looks a lot better than what you get with the Passat and I guess it's better to have touch base, all this fancy schmancy stuff instead of having it completely integrated into the display. So on the premium scale, this one, not bad lah, yeah? What is not so nice is this gear console design which looks really old, I mean in comparison to all the new stuff that you get. Plus the sport mode button is all the way here. So when you're in D, your gear stick is here, but then you have to reach over here for the sport mode. Why can't they all integrate it into this side? You know, we're a right-hand drive country. It makes sense for the control to be here, right? Instead of here. So it's like Volkswagen isn't even trying anymore at this point. So yeah. The front seats are slightly redesigned. So they now get integrated head restraints. Napa leather is standard, which is already a big jump over the C-Class and 3 Series. It's comfortable and both seats get 14-way power adjustability, but only the driver's side gets memory function and extendable thigh support. At the back, as you can see, it is ridiculously spacious, far more legroom than what the Mercedes-Benz C-Class and BMW 3 Series could offer. And headroom is not bad also, considering the uh, fastback styling of the car. But one thing you have to note is the windows don't go all the way down and the aperture itself is rather small. So this is quite typical for Ford Coupes, but hey, at least you get stuff like your own uh, dedicated third zone climate control here. No blow adjustment though, so that's unfortunate, but there is also a USB-C charging port and a 12 volt charging socket. So this is an upgrade from the pre-facelift Arteon. But what is not an upgrade is this. Just a little niggle, I mean, come on. I really like the overall cabin this time. Interior lighting is full LED, and there's even a 30 color ambient lighting system, and the lighting elements on the doors are just so unique. The previous Leaf Arteon had just a thin strip of light, but this is properly fancy. 
Boot space is also ridiculously large at 563 litres of space. So that dwarfs even the G30 BMW 5 Series. And as you can see, it opens up hatch style, so you can chuck really big things in here. On the plus side, you also get a 60-40 split configuration, plus a ski hatch in the middle for you to load like really long stuff. And I'm actually glad I got to spend like a weekend with this car because it coincides somewhat with my home moving process and I'm really, really glad 85% of my stuff fit into this car. So this is a testament to how practical this car can be in a pinch and it's definitely easier than, you know, the sedan. Much easier than the 3 Series and the C-Class. So this is awesome and I don't think there is a contest whatsoever. This is a strong suit. Okay, now for the driving bit. As you know, this guy is powered by the fabled E8 888 2-liter turbo 4 engine making 280 PS and 350 Nm of torque. The figure is actually 50 Nm less than what the European models get, but maybe that's because of fuel quality issues. Still, it is a big fat upgrade compared to the pre-facelift Arteon, which had 190 PS and 320 Nm of torque. This is the powertrain that should have been offered with the Arteon R-Line from the get-go because you want a fast-looking car to actually go fast, right? And this is exactly how you're supposed to get people's attention. First, you bait them with your sexy looks, and then once they go to the showrooms and take this car for a spin and test drive, it's usually a done deal after they test out the performance. There's so much more oomph here, a lot more go when you compare this to the C200 and the 320i Sport. Plus, you get a really fast shifting 7-speed dual clutch transmission or DSG and it comes with a wet clutch pack so maybe it's going to be a bit more reliable in the long run. Now, this DSG is the DQ381 unit which is the same found in the Golf R and it is rated to handle at up to 420 Nm of torque. So if you want to mod your car, there is a limit to where you can mod to before you, know, you risk breaking something. In terms of outright performance, this guy is really, really quick. In comfort mode, which I am right now, it feels sedated, but just flick it into sport mode, and my gosh, the car just becomes a little bit more visceral. So you can hear the engine note. So it becomes a little bit more synthesized. So it's piped through the speakers, and the transmission mapping, the engine mapping, they all feel more amped up, so it's more aggressive in sport mode as it should be. Sport mode actually does amplify the sense of speed a little, and before you know it, you're already doing the 0 to 100 in 5.6 seconds. That is quicker than the 530e M Sport plug-in hybrid, mind you, and it does so all that because of the 4-motion all-wheel drive system. So you have that to thank. And there's actually one little secret that Volkswagen didn't say or didn't officially say that this car is capable of and that is launch control. Okay, so the sequence for launch control is the same as the Golf R. Just slip it into sport mode. Uh, make sure you're in sport first, of course. And then switch off the traction control. ESC Sport off and uh, make sure it's in S, not D. And then just press the brake and the throttle pedal. Launch control program active and... And 100. That's, that's pretty okay. It's not too aggressive like the Golf R. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to show you that. But, you know, at least, <laughs> you know, it's here. <laughs> and that is, uh, that is quite fun, to be honest. Based on our testing, the combined fuel efficiency for the Arteon is about 9 to 9.2 litres per 100 kilometres. This is not too far off from the claimed consumption figure of 8.2 litres. The test was carried out with Petronas Primax 97 with ProRace. The fuel gives you unbeatable power as well as better responsiveness and fuel efficiency. Now with Settle, you can enjoy the ultimate convenience and safety. Pay for petrol from inside your own car. Just pay, pump and go. You can use it at all Petronas stations nationwide. And while you're at the station, enjoy Makan at Mesra. 
fresh and well-balanced premium food at affordable prices available at your convenience. Petronas, your seamless retail on the go partner. So in terms of outright taste, this guy obviously blows the competition out of the water, especially in this price range. It also handles pretty competently for a car of its size and length. And I feel like this is the magic of the Arteon and the Passat actually. They feel light on their feet, largely because of the MQB platform. Sometimes you just don't feel like you're driving a D-segment car because of its sheer agility. DCC or Dynamic Chassis Control is standard here, which means all four corners get adaptive dampers as standard. In comfort mode, ride is okay, it's a little bit on the firm side, just like the Passat R-Line. And in sport mode, it stiffens up a little bit so you get better control and more uh, body neutrality in the corners. But all this fancy trickery still can't make up for its rough edges. The 3 Series is just so much better sprung, more polished and finessed in their rebounds, and it does so passively, mind you. It's more graceful and sure-footed in the corners, whereas the Arteon feels more eager and twitchy. Grip level is amazing though, thanks in part to the XDS electronic differential. Now, I don't think it's fair to rate one better than the other, because at the end of the day, it really is a matter of preference. If you like the way this guy rides, sure. If you like the way the Beamer rides, then sure. If you like the C-Class for that matter, go for it. But objectively, the 3 Series offers a more polished and more matured ride quality, and it will be even better if you use regular tires instead of run-flat tires. NVH levels in this thing is actually okay. A reader actually pointed out that we use uh, single glaze windows for our Arteons instead of the double glazed ones, which would improve uh, or rather will dampen exterior noise a little bit more. I agree, I think we could use the upgrade, but maybe this is one of the cost cutting measures. But still, uh, it's not bad. You do hear a bit of tire raw, but there are enough insulating materials in the wheel wells to keep tire raw out of the cabin. Also, it rides on UHP tires, so if you want to use touring tires, it might be slightly quieter than this. So overall, I think it is a decent package. Now, I hate to end the driving section on a little bit of a negative note, but I feel like there's really no way around it because that's how I usually assess a car. It has to do with the car's safety system because I think for a super stylish car like this that is encroaching premium, like proper premium car category, it is still donkey years behind in terms of driving aids, especially because you don't have AEB, you don't have adaptive cruise control. You only get like lane keep assist and blind spot monitor. There's not even rear cross traffic alert. The 360 degree camera system is also a bit low on resolution. So I guess it has the potential for a hardware upgrade to make it look better. But as it is right now, it's not really nice. Both the entry-level German cars have AEB as standard and for a car with the head unit below eye level, I really think AEB should be standard because it is, it is a risk, you know, when you are so distracted with your display down here and then you don't know what's going in front of you, which isn't the way it should be, but when it does happen, you really want AEB to, have, to be present in your car to save you in that instance. So moving forwards, I hope that VTCM will start paying more attention to advanced driving aids because it is really high time for cars to come with all these safety features. I mean, just look at Peradoa, they are way, they are leagues ahead of a lot of other car brands and Volkswagen is so much behind. To summarize, I think the Arteon is very competitively priced and it has a lot of tricks up its sleeves to sway buyers in the 250,000 ringgit category. It won't be sold in huge numbers because Malaysians, for the most part, find it difficult to look beyond superficialities. And sometimes they can be very difficult to be reasoned with, even in the face of such exemplary machine. Badge knobs exist everywhere. And in this part of the world, people grow up wanting nice things, you know? So they look towards BMW, Audi, Porsche, and mercedes Benzes as, you know, brands that they aspire to achieve one day. So yeah, a lot of people just happen to be that way. The Arteon is, by all intents and purposes, a really nice thing. It's fast, it's immensely spacious, and it is drop-dead gorgeous. For all the hours I spent driving it, ironically, the people who stare at it the longest are 
uh, Mercedes-Benz and BMW owners. Call it envy, call it buyer's remorse. Whatever the case is, this will be an emotional purchase rather than a logical one, and those who are truly intentional about how they spend the 250,000 ringgit should definitely consider this one. A nice little bonus is that you get a five-year unlimited mileage warranty with this car, plus a three-year free service package. That's not quite as nice as BMW's five-year warranty and five-year free service package should you go with the BSRI package. But you know, it's still three years worth of nasi lama every time you go to the service center, lah, which is a lot better than what Mercedes-Benz is offering. And I guess to all the Volkswagen Arteon owners out there, big props to you a lot for making the decision to buy this over its mainstream rivals, you know. And uh, if you've made it this far to the video, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. This review is brought to you by Petronas Premax 97 with ProRace. Power to move beyond.